Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. First of all, thanks to all of those replying to my last video in regards to if you were still getting notifications from the HugoTalks.com website. That was very helpful. I think the problem was something to do with me changing the layout of the comments section. Why that would affect email notifications to subscribers, I don't know. I believe that is what it might have been. I'll keep an eye on it though. Should have listened to the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. So again, I wanted to do something a little different. There's a few things going on in the news. It's all pantomime stuff. It's all this, it's just the same old merry-go-round of fear propaganda and fake crap from all sides. And I'll cover stuff in later videos. But with this video, I thought I'd talk about this topic, faith in the unseen. Now I get quite a few comments from people saying that I am crazy, that I've lost my marbles. And all because I mentioned God, Jesus, ooh, and the Bible. Oh no, this just goes to show how indoctrinated people have become by the media. And the general gist of the comments I get are like, you're an idiot because you believe in an imaginary God <laughs> that lives in the clouds <laughs> or something like that, right? Which is, which is basically faith in the unseen. You might have seen these comments. I don't know if these people have seen the video I did back in October, which kind of explained how I came about to think in this way. But yeah, I get a lot of these comments and really I wanted to talk about how in general, the majority of people, of the public, nearly all people, believers, non-believers, how the basis of their lives is based around faith in the unseen as well. Okay, now faith, it says here, is strong belief in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual conviction rather than proof. So it's the belief in something that cannot be shown, that is not visible, it's faith in the unseen. Here we see in 2 Corinthians 4.18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And also here, Hebrews 11.1, 1. now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now I'm, I'm going to estimate, right, that people who make these comments saying God is not real, you're an idiot, you believe in fairy tales, right? I'm going to guess that these people most probably have structured their lives around faith that they can't see. First off, right, first off, most people have ambitions, right? They've got plans. For example, if a person wants to succeed at an endeavor, they have to have faith in themselves, they have to have belief that they can do whatever they set out to do. If they have a goal and they want to achieve that goal, it's only going to succeed if they believe they can do it, yeah? But that faith in themselves is something that you can't see. You can't touch it. You can't measure it. You can't weigh it. And so, you know, the difference between someone succeeding and failing, it usually comes down to how much faith, belief they have in themselves. And yet, like faith in God, that is faith, a belief that is also unseen. Of course, you get people who succeed and become very confident, believe they are the big I am, I am the greatest, become egomaniacs, big business greedy people, most of the, most of the control freaks we see in the media, pretty much all of the people on TV in the spotlight have out of control egos. They are full of themselves, yeah? And that's because they have too much faith in themselves. They are not humble, yeah? It's very self-evident. The Bible defines humility as the fear of the Lord. It also states that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Egomaniacs who are full of themselves, they like to brag. They like to talk themselves up. They like to big themselves up. And someone who is really full of themselves, it's an ugly characteristic to have. Because even though they have faith in themselves, they may be confident. Going from what I've seen, most don't have any faith in God. This is where you get the uh, Yuval Noah Harari type of person who believes 
that they can become their own god and want to hack into human souls and control them, etc, etc. That's why people like this become control freaks and try to control everything and everyone around them. That's, why, that's when you start to get problems. Yet still, this situation, it stems from their faith in the unseen, but it's a godless one, a selfish one. The foundation of most people's lives is based on the unseen. The family unit stems from this, does it not? If you ask most people, what's the most important thing to you? A lot of them will say, family. And those feelings are based and are created around love. The concept of love, which again, cannot be seen. You know, love is all about faith in the unseen as well. Did you, did you not ever have a crush on someone when you were a teenager and were left heartbroken, you know, unrequited love? It sucks big time, doesn't it? And then maybe you find someone as an adult and you click with them. There's some form of a spark. It's like something you both know. You fall in love. Um, do you believe in love? If so, love is faith in the unseen as well. It's the belief in a feeling, a mutual feeling. And a majority of people based their life around this. People fall in love. They get married. They, they then want to have a family. They then want to get a family home, a nest, a house. End up, you know, unfortunately, getting exploited by the system. You know, they get, end up getting a mortgage, have 25 years to pay it back, which sucks because the system has inflated prices to such a degree to trap people into working for long periods of time, which is manipulation. But this is your standard format of many people's lives. This is how it pans out for many people. And it stems initially from love. You find someone, you believe you're in love, you make a commitment, you get married, you form a covenant with that person, and then it goes on from there. Family, having children, taking responsibility for them, helping them to grow, hopefully teaching them wrong from right. That's the idea, isn't it? Go forth and multiply. It's what people have been doing all this time. And it's all based around love. And that love is faith in the unseen. You can't see it, but you can feel it. You have to have faith in that unseen feeling and you commit to it and you end up getting married and you, you're making a commitment to love with that person and it's based on faith, which is belief in the unseen. So how many people are living like that, are in situations that stem from this? Loads, I reckon, yet many of them will say, what are you doing believing in an imaginary fairy tale God? Where is he? I can't see him. You believe in something you can't see. Ha ha ha. They say this, but not analyzing or looking at their own lives and how their situations, their decisions in their own life is most probably also based on faith in the unseen as well, because it's all centered around love. Of course, a lot of marriages now end in divorce, usually because someone was unfaithful. You know, you broke someone's trust. Your faith in your relationship was not strong enough. You got tempted. Someone gave in to temptation. I mean, it's not always the case. It, there can be other factors. But just as an example, that's why it's called a sin. In the Bible, sin is described as leading to destruction. But people don't follow this anymore. Hence why divorce rates have skyrocketed since the 70s. You're following the man-made scripts as opposed to following scripture. So it makes sense that the consequence of being unfaithful, breaking your faith and belief, a sin, it leads to destruction of the marriage, which then, if it's a family, it breaks up the family. The children then grow up in one parent families. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of unhappiness. The repercussions can last for a long, long time. I mean, nobody wants to see a family break up. And, you know, this is where it goes wrong. Yet these outcomes stem from faith in the unseen. And I find it interesting that people criticize and joke about those who have faith in God, faith in the unseen, 
Yet simultaneously, those same people, their decisions and the situations they are currently in are also all based and stem from feelings and emotions like love, family, marriage, and are driven by faith in themselves, which are also both unprovable and cannot be seen. Yet they joke about other people believing in God, which is also faith in the unseen. It's kind of weird. Well, I find it weird anyway. The problem is the media, the propaganda, those that influence culture, Hollywood, pop music, trends, and so on, who have pushed the Bible and God out of people's minds over a period of time, which is quite an achievement, especially when, you know, I mean, just take a look around you. Look at the world around you. Where did that all come from? Your proof is all around you. You think it all came from a big bang? Who told you that? Oh, right, the man-made script writers told you. The show pony TV presenters will tell you that. The same people that, oh, just so happen to get millions and millions of views online and promoted on the major TV networks, promoted everywhere to influence the masses. Those ones, no shadow banning for them. Oh, no. They will have you believe everything around you is just a random accident when it is clearly designed to work seamlessly. All functional parts and systems of living organisms all working in tandem. As I've said before, people have been trained, groomed to follow man-made scripts as opposed to following scripture, which is there to guide you to living the right way. It's up to you. I mean, if you want to follow it or not, but people have been trained to follow the news, to trust the science. People now put their faith in the system, in the news. Everyone queuing up and getting injections and not knowing anything about it shows you where their faith is. Again, that was also faith in the unseen and a very much misplaced faith. People ask me, why do I keep banging on about the Bible? Because when I look around now, I see nothing that I trust. I trust in no man. So I'm continually going back to the source. I trust in no man-made organization. There's plenty of Bible quotes to support that way of thinking. Uh, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. The fear of man bringeth a snare, a trap. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe, and so on. I mean, you can love your fellow man, but you don't have to trust him. This lack of scripture, this lack of the word of God, the slow conditioning of people now over generations to look at this and pour scorn over it. This is why people now lack discernment and are easily controlled. They are foundationless. They will be swayed to and fro in the storm. They have faith, but it's misplaced. It's misdirected. They believe the news. They have faith in the men in suits, trust in science, in, in the Neil deGrasse Tyson media spokesman, show pony man and his, and his jazz hands. Ta-da! They have faith in that. They have faith in what is seen. Yeah, faith in what is seen on their Black Mirror devices, on the news, the TV, on their favourite shows. It's what they can see as opposed to faith in the unseen. You also now have, you know, the alternative news. Much of that is part of the Hegelian dialectic, both getting people to follow the man-made scripts so you ignore the scripture. Scripture, which teaches you to test everything. Thessalonians, test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Scripture, which tells you to think independently, to be wary, to use your discernment and not follow blindly, and warns of false prophets, liars and deceivers. Let no man deceive you. It says in Genesis, God made humankind in his image and likeness. That's why you have faith in the unseen and how your imagination can create things, not out of nothing like God did, but can create things out of existing material. Now, I'm beginning to get the sense that I'm beginning to ramble a little bit. But when the crap hits the fan, as they say, it will be those, I believe, who have strong faith. It's going to be tested, 
but it will, it will be those who are strong in their faith who will be the ones who will not panic, who will not go apeshit, who will have a moral and ethical code that they will hold fast to. They will not sink to the levels that others will, who, others who don't have any faith, who will be losing the plot. So look, that's, that's all I wanted to say. A bit of a ramble. Does it make any sense to you? Let me know what you think. I'll leave you with this one. These trials are only to test your faith, to show that it is strong and pure. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. And your faith is far more precious to God than mere gold. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to the website, hugotalks.com. To get notified of all video uploads, as many are not on here anymore. And I'll see you later.